What's going on YouTube? Welcome back to the Thomas Gallery. Today, I want to talk about art and religion. Now, we've already done art and politics. We've even done art and sex. Now, let's talk about art and religion and the role that art plays in religions across the world. Now, for those who may not know, <clears throat> the word religion it's it's a very touchy word it's a very touchy subject but I wonder how many people actually know what the word means where it comes from it's a very simple it's a very simple meaning it actually has two meanings it has a French and it has a Latin meaning and they both mean both translations of French and Latin mean one one thing to bind or bound or held to or held down to okay the word religion the etymology of the word religion literally means to bind. Okay? Now the question would obviously be bind to what? And that is that, that's personal opinion. But when I come when it comes to art and religion, let's talk about the binding that 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 art has when, when you have when you have images and those images bring bring a certain idea okay in religion many 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 of our of our ideas of religion regardless of where you are in the world comes from mainly the images or the art that is being displayed think about this when you take the image of Jesus okay a lot of times when we think of the image of Jesus, we see him as a, a white man, blonde hair, blue eyes, white man. Even though in the Bible, it describes him as a dark man, skin, like hair, like hair, like lamb's wool, feet like burned brass. Now, I don't know if anybody's ever seen burnt brass, but it is dark. If you've if you ever seen brass, just look at an instrument. Just look at it like a saxophone. That's a brass instrument. You see the color of brass, right? Now, imagine burning it, and it gets darker, okay? That's how he was actually described in the Bible. However, the image, the image that comes to mind is not what's described in the Bible. Why is that? Well, you have... The Renaissance period, where you have a lot of the Pope, the Pope of the Popes of that time, commission works of Jesus, and they wanted him to be depicted as something that they're familiar with. And what are they familiar with? They're familiar with their own skin. So it was painted like like Michelangelo's the Sistine Chapel. Okay. Commissioned by Pope, Pope Sixtus, which is for whom it's named. He painted Jesus as a white man, even though the Bible states his actual identity. Now, from that point forward, that's five, six hundred years ago. From that point forward, that image of a white Jesus has dominated cultures all over, across the world. Okay? You even have the omission of art and religion. Like in Islam, there are no images of the Prophet Muhammad. There are none. It's forbidden to show images of the Prophet Muhammad. You have Buddha. Now, here's the thing many people across the world are Buddhist. But you have different depictions of the Buddha. In actuality, the Buddha, which the word Buddha is a Sanskrit word that means the enlightened one, to be enlightened. Okay? It's not his name. It's actually it's, it's a title, not a name. Like Christ is a title, not a name. Okay? All right. The Buddha has been depicted as many forms. The actual Buddha, the actual person who was named as the Buddha, the enlightened one was an Indian man, okay? He was Indian, from India. Dark-skinned man, Indian. 
But when, depending on where you go in the world, he is depicted differently. He has a a belly. You see, you see the you see the, the round, robust, plump Buddha with the belly and the long earlobes. You have you have the Buddha with the you no know, slim, long beard, right? Many different forms, many different forms of the Buddha has taken place across the world depending on where the people live. Okay, that's the art that's being shown. Art, art is pretty much a personal thing. It's how you personal. It's a visual or a, a depiction of your perspective of your environment. So however you view things, that's how it will come out in your art. So there's no wonder. Is is no wonder how the Buddha can take different shape, different forms depending on where it is, where the image is in the world. Okay. The image of God. Okay. When we think of God. We think of old white man, long white beard, wearing some kind of tun tunic. Like, you know, why is that? Well, the image of a long beard is a sign of wisdom. That has been shown across the world. Long beards with wrinkly skin, with, you know, it's a sign of age and wisdom. Okay, so it's no it's no wonder how you'll see many different gods depicted as having a beard of some form, a beard. Okay, that that's 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 an artistic display. You have a long flowing beard, and depending on where you are in the world, it'd be different colors. So it'd be a white flowing beard, a black flowing whatever. But that image of this old white man with a long beard. Anytime you see an image of God, that's the image you'll see. In, mo in, in a lot of cases. Now, like I said, depending on where you are in the world, and depending on what time period you're talking about, that can change. For instance, in ancient Egypt, the deities there, or the netchers, the actual word, the netchers that there, there were no white flowing beards. Why not? They had beards, but they weren't like white flowing, like big Santa Claus looking beards. No. The skin. With brown, like my complexion or darker. Or in some cases, green. Like you have pata. Green. No. You have... In a lot of civilizations, art shown in for religion to... <laughs> Either liberate or subjugate. Just the image, just the artistic image of the cross, depending on where you are in the world or what time period you're talking about, got to be good or bad. Let's just be honest. If you were talking, if you were in the Crusades, any Crusades during that time period, and you saw the cross, and you were a Muslim, then there'd be a problem. And a lot of times they use that cross, that just that symbol, just that image, that artistic image. If you were a Christian, it can be a sign of liberation. It can be a subjugation, depending on how you want to read it. But art and religion, they, I think out of all the three I mentioned, art and sex, art and politics, art religion, art and religion are almost, I would say, Siamese twins. The religion couldn't really get a stronghold in society if there were no artistic images. Think about that. Imagine having the religions of the world with no images whatsoever. Imagine not having an image of Jesus. I imagine not having an image of Muhammad, which you don't anyway. I imagine no images of the Buddha. I imagine no images of God as in the Judeo-Christian sense. I imagine no images in ancient Egypt. Just, just imagine religion without the company of art to give you a visual image of these ideas. Imagine religion with no images of an angel. Think about that. 
You hear a lot about angels. You hear a lot about the devil. What if there were no images of Satan or the devil? Think about that. How will we depict them? Would he still be with the red skin and the horns and the, the, the tail and the pitchfork? How would he be depicted? How would the how how would Moses be depicted if there were no artistic images of this person we know as Moses? No images of the parting of the Red Sea. Actually the Sea of Reeds, but for the sake of argument, the Red Sea. What if there were no artistic images of the parting of the Red Sea? How would the story of Ten Commandments be told? How strong would it be? What about what if there were what if there was no images of the crucifixion? What if no one had ever painted or drawn an image of Jesus on the cross? How would that how would that story be depicted? How would it be told and how would it be depicted? Think about that. Now, all that I said art for the most part is subjective. But that subjective art has transformed either for the good or for the bad, depending on who you are and where you are and what time period. The, it, it has changed the world permanently. Once art got into religion, we have yet to look back. We have yet to go backwards and say, well, let's do it before there was art before image, and art and before religion. Once somebody put, once somebody drew an image of a deity or an images, image of a supreme, a supreme entity and said that this is how the, our creator looks. Once somebody did, whoever did it or whatever civilization did it, once somebody did that, it changed the game forever. It changed everything. It changed society as a whole. Because now we have a way of personalizing. We have a way of giving these images, these abstract, far-off images. We, we personified them. Why? Because we wanted, these, we wanted these things that we really can't mentally conceive. We wanted them to seem relatable. So what do we do? We made the incorporal corporal. We didn't know why it thundered and rain and snow. We didn't know why. And when we told the stories, it still seems so far-fetched. So when we made an image of a person or a being that looked like a human being, when we gave that, we gave that event a personalized look, it changed everything. Because now we can make sense. We can say, oh, well, the reason why it snows is because of the frost giants and Odin, the Allfather, went to sleep. And Thor and Loki and... Hella and Zeus and Heracles. I know you said Hercules, but Heracles also. All these things and Apollo, all these things. How's the sun being held up? Ooh, those things. When somebody just drew a circle and made it orange or red or yellow and said, this is the deity we call the sun or Ra or Apollo or Helios whatever once we did that once we gave we, we gave complex ideas human form artistically permanently changed and we have yet to look back so that's my little soliloquy on art and religion I hope you all enjoyed it check it out catch y'all later peace